Welcome back, Sebastian here. So today I'm gonna to be doing my final video, uh, final video uh, in my series looking at each Formula E team after season nine. Uh, so of course today we'll be looking at first and second in the team's championship, uh, Jaguar and Envision. So starting off with uh, Jaguar, uh, driver lineup this year was uh, Mitch Evans and Sam Bird, which coming into this season, I think a lot of people had on paper as one of the strongest lineups in Formula E. So uh, in the points head to head, 197 points for uh, Evans, 95 points for Bird. Uh, really a massive difference there in favor of Evans. Race head to head was not particularly close either, 72 in favor of Evans. And making things a bit worse for Bird, I think I believe those two wins for basically those two wins in the head to head for him uh, were at the very beginning of the season when you know people were really getting used to the Gen 3 car. So really after that point, Evans has basically completely dominated Bird. Average finishing position, 4.2 for Evans, which is the highest of all drivers in Formula E this year. And uh, Bird was nine, so about five positions different, which is uh, quite large. Uh, in the quality head to head though, it was actually much closer than I was expecting, which really highlighted where Sam Bird was really having his struggles against Mitch Evans. Uh, so quality head to head, nine to six in favor of Evans and gap was 0 0.088 seconds. So just a little bit less than a tenth of a second on average uh, during the basically the group stage of the duels, uh, which is very, very close and that's a very respectable amount uh, given that I think Evans, uh, according to the official Formula E uh, website, there he was the best qualifier in Formula E in season nine. Uh, power ranking average 3.8 for Evans, uh, second in all Formula E, only behind Nikasi over here whereas Bird was 13.5. So interestingly enough, now that I've calculated all of them, I believe Dennis was actually behind both Cassidy and Evans on average, but that four race slump in the middle of the season really hurt him uh, in terms of my power rankings. Uh, that being said, you know, I think all three of them were very, very close overall. So uh, yeah, think, just taking a look at that, uh, Evans, much better than Bird on average, I thought. And you know, Bird, I did think, had a pretty poor year, uh, particularly in the race where he took out his teammate twice on two occasions. And though both of those occasions resulted in DNFs for Evans and not just being sent to the back of the field, which is why this 4.2 number is quite good. Uh, now, just taking a look at Jaguar's recent history uh, to, so that we could put this season into context, 2020, 81 points, seventh in the championship. Pretty poor year, I think, by their standards. I believe their lineup that year was uh, Mitch Evans and James Collado. Uh, Evans basically scoring the vast majority of their points. 2021, 177 points, uh, second in the team's championship. Much better year. Of course, that was the year that I believe uh, Sam Bird came over from Jaguar. 2022, 231 points, a good jump in points, but they dropped to fourth in the uh, team's championship in the final year of the Gen 2 era. 2023, first year of Gen 3, 292 points, another big jump forward, and they move up to second in the team's championship. But uh, like quite a few of the other stories I've talked about uh, in terms of dynamic between customer team and works team, another case where the customer team finishes ahead of the works team, which is quite unusual. Uh, now moving over here to, the, to that set to say customer team, Envision. Uh, team's championship, uh, very first time, a team's champion, I believe, uh, when they were virgin racing back in gen, the Gen 1 era, uh, kind of per, first part of the Gen 2 era as well. Uh, they did finish second on a couple of occasions, but yeah, this year is the their first team's championship in Formula E, and very well deserved as well. Uh, two drivers, Cassidy, Boemi, uh, both drivers I thought were pretty good this year. Uh, 199 points for Cassidy, 105 for Boemi. Uh, Boemi had a lot of things go wrong this year, a lot of things out of his control. I remember, uh, for example, Hyderabad, uh, where he was basically on for his po first podium of the season and then was basically given a massive penalty for a, I believe, a power power overuse. Uh, so race head to head, I think, bears that out as well. Eight to six in favor of Cassidy, which is honestly a lot closer than I would have thought in races where they both finished. Uh, race average finishing position, 5.7 for Cassidy. Cassidy did have quite a few races, uh, particularly at the start of the year and races uh, like I can think of Jakarta. Uh, and uh, the second race in Rome, which bring that total down quite a bit. Uh, and 8.5 for Boemi, which is, you know, not great, but not terrible either. Uh, and it's better than Sam Bird. 
uh, quality head to head very, very close as well. And I'm honestly was not su surprised by this. Uh, there were quite a few qualifying sessions where Cassidy was starting like 9th, 10th, 11th, and he would still end up either winning the race or end up on the podium. So 9 to 7 in favor of Cassidy, but the, uh, the uh, qualifying delta was actually in Boemi's favor uh, 0 0.033, uh, but yeah, so very, very small amount. Uh, average in my power rankings 3.7 for Cassidy, like I mentioned before, and 5.8 for Boemi, which is actually much higher than I remember. Uh, but that being said, I do think Boemi had a pretty good year. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of massive incidents that were his fault. Uh, he had some things like uh, incidents that were out of his control, but that being said, I'm not going to knock, I wasn't going to knock him down my power rankings because of that. Uh, so looking at Envision's recent history, 121 points, uh, fourth in the team's uh, championship, uh, 2021, uh, yeah, 2020, 2021, uh, 165 points, good improvement in points, but they moved down to fifth in the team's championship that year. 2022, 194 points and fifth in the team's championship. So uh, same, t same rank, but uh, quite a few more points. Probably helped by the uh, change in the qualifying format. And then 2023 this year, massive improvement in points, uh, about 110, I believe. Uh, and they move up to first in the team's championship, really helped by that, uh, the strength of the Jaguar powertrain. So for both Jaguar and Envision, they're obviously going to be looking to carry that success from this season on to next year uh, and trying to fend off the likes of Porsche and uh, DS Penske as well and trying to make sure that they stay in the head of, those, of that group. Uh, I guess Nissan's also in that group, but I would say those top three teams, uh, maybe including the Nissan as well, are the, are the teams that we're really going to be watching out for in Season 10. Of course, for Jaguar, the other interesting dynamic heading into next year is that they've signed... Uh, Envision star driver Nick Cassidy, so they'll have Evans and Cassidy next year, which I think will be a very, very interesting lineup. Uh, as its replacement, Envision have signed uh, Robin Freins back. Uh, Freins, I think, is a very good driver, but had a really a down year with wrist injury and everything else, and was actually behind uh, Nico Muller in their head to head. I'll link the video to that uh, just if, in case you're interested in watching that. But that being said, uh, I think both these teams will, for the most part, be really happy with how this year went. Uh, getting a 1-2 in the team's championship as well. So thank you so much for watching. This is really marks the end of uh, Formula E content for Season 9. I might do something uh, for pre-season pre testing. I might do uh, a couple driver signings here and there uh, if there's any really surprising ones that come to light over the next couple of months. And of course, I'll be back again next year, Season 10. Uh, really looking forward to it as well. So thank you so much for watching uh, with me uh, this past year. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you again next season. Goodbye.